Hello and welcome back to another Doctor Who action figure review. In today's review, I'm taking a look at the latest B&M release, which is the Deadly Assassin set, featuring the fourth Doctor, Chancellor Goth, and Cardinal Barusa. There's a lot to unpack with what's going on with the figures in this set. It was the set that I was most excited for this year because I love the Deadly Assassin. It's my joint top favorite story. I love it, so I was really keen to see what we had in store with this set. But before we begin, let's take a look at the packaging. The figures come packaged in the standard window box featuring the new Doctor Who style guide with the diamond logo, the Jodie Whittaker TARDIS, and all of the usual diamond box outs that we've come to see on the previous Dalek sets and on the TARDIS set, and of course, the gold limited edition foil sticker. This time around, the box is a light blue, which I guess is the color for the fourth Doctor's figures. And then on the side of the box, we also have another look at the white and blue motif with the diamond logo. And then on the back, we have a massive synopsis about the story, The Deadly Assassin. And then much like with the Daleks, once you take the inner box from the outer packaging, you can see that the Time Lords are bubble sealed to the cardboard much like with the Daleks. It does mean that you're gonna end up destroying the packaging when you're trying to take these guys out like I did. I'm not hugely bothered. I think it'd be more bothered if there was a diorama backdrop to these figures, but they don't do that anymore. And then we have the figures themselves. So like I said at the start, there's a lot to unpack here. Obviously the main thing is that this set uses the same base figure three times, which is fine. I've always wanted to see some classic Time Lords in the line, so it doesn't bother me in the slightest. And I think they've done a fantastic job with the paint applications on the Time Lord outfits. They look beautiful. So with that in mind, let's jump in with the first figure that we're going to talk about, which is Chancellor Goth. Now, this is a figure I never imagined we would ever get in the line. It just seemed bonkers that we would ever get him. And uh, yet here he is, and he looks phenomenal. I absolutely love the fact that we have this guy as a figure. He is absolutely fantastic in terms of the likeness. The sculpt is phenomenal. An absolutely brilliant likeness of Bernard Horsfall. I mean, you can't get much better than this. He looks brilliant, and the paint apps are very well done, very neat and crisp. I love how you can see the hair just popping out underneath the skull cap. The only thing that's missing in terms of the paint apps is the silver makeup that they wear in that story. Time Lords and the Deadly Assassin have a bit of a glam rock look to them with a bit of silver makeup on the cheeks and lips. So that isn't present here. Perhaps it was just considered deco too far. Maybe it looked a bit weird on the figure. Perhaps it just was an extra expense that they thought wasn't necessary. I'm not really fussed either way because he looks so damn good. And then looking at the rest of the figure, so the Time Lord collar, this is molded in a translucent plastic. So if you hold it up to the light, you'll see the light shine through it because it's supposed to replicate the fiberglass colors of the Time Lord costumes. And you can see this has been finished off with some lovely detailing in terms of the orange piping around the outside. You've got the red and the gold on the inside. And then we've got the two seals of Rassilon on either side of the collar. Now this has been painted over the top of the pre-existing sculpt. So this figure was originally released as a Time Lord from Series 3, although it was mismarked Series 4, if I remember rightly, way back in 2008. So we're going back quite a while. And I'm honestly really amazed that we haven't seen any classic Time Lords before then, uh, especially like the fourth Doctor, which we'll talk about in a minute. So it's great to see that sculpt get some use in the classic range. And like I said, because of that, it's got the modern seal of the Time Lords underneath the seal of Rassilon here. You can just sort of see it, but the paint apps of the classic Seal of Rassilon cover it up nicely. Uh, and I'm really, really glad that they kept that and that they didn't just use the modern ones. So that's really good. It really finishes it off. One thing that is worth pointing out, however, is when you move the figure around to the back, you'll notice that the paint apps are lacking on the back of his collar. So it feels like the paint just ends halfway from that red and gold trim at the front. The orange continues all the way around to the back, but the other bits of piping, which are sculpted, aren't painted. I'm not sure why that is. At first I thought perhaps it was a painting fault, but I've seen other people who have the figures in hand already and they seem to have the same issue. So it may be a case of, in order to cut down on the cost of the deco, they only painted the front, which we've seen with 
other figures in the past. A little bit disappointing, but honestly, I don't think many people are going to be displaying their figures facing backwards. And the deco on these guys is quite extensive elsewhere on the figure as well. So we'll go into a bit of that now. So going down to the rest of the robes, we've got the orangey brown robes, the Pride and Academy. They've been given a lovely light wash over the top, which really accentuates the creases and the folds of the robes. It's a beautiful sculpt. It always was. James Atchison's designs for the Time Lord costumes in The Deadly Assassin are just iconic. So these guys look fantastic. And then we've got some really cool detailing right down the sides of the robe. This trim here with the silver and black diamond motif, exactly as it looks in the episode. So that's really, really great. And if you look carefully underneath the lower robes, this is a lighter orange colour. They've even painted on the brown sort of arrowy bit that goes across the waist on those robes. And it just looks phenomenal. It really finishes it off. He looks amazing. And another little bit of attention to detail that I love is the fact that they've painted his hands brown to make them look like they're gloved. But they've also got the two little communicator discs on the back of the hands, which is fantastic. So if you want to pose your figure talking to Castellan Spandrel or the Chancellery Guard, you can do that. So overall, Chancellor Goth, an amazing figure. He looks fantastic. Uh, love the head sculpt, love the paint apps. They've just done an absolutely phenomenal job with him. Uh, and he's an important character. You know, he's a big character in that story because he's the second baddie, spoiler alert. Um, but obviously he was also the same actor who played a Time Lord that sentenced the second Doctor to exile on Earth. So, you know, could be the same character. In my head canon, it's the same character. Uh, a great figure to have. Then we move on to the fourth Doctor in his Time Lord robes. So what we've got here is basically the same as Chancellor Goth, but the robes are less resplendent. I guess he's a, a lower ranking Time Lord, the robes that the fourth Doctor stole. But otherwise, a lot of the main points that I made for Goth still stand. All of the paint apps on the robes look fantastic. Again, with that lovely wash to accentuate those details. The paintwork on the collar is really excellent, again, with the seal of Rassilons. Same thing that it's not painted around the back, which, again, is a little bit odd. But let's talk about the main thing that uh, drew a lot of contention on the internet, which is the new Fourth Doctor's head sculpt. So I saw a few people online say, well, why, why have they given the Fourth Doctor a new head sculpt? Why couldn't they have just stuck an old Fourth Doctor head on this figure? A couple of reasons. Well, first of all, he doesn't wear the robes without wearing the skull cap. The other reason is, of course, that the neck attachment is very different to the Fourth Doctor figures. All of the Fourth Doctor figures generally plug in ones. You know, there's a peg and the head plugs into that peg. For the Time Lord figure, the peg is attached to the head and it plugs into the body. You can't take it off. It's really firm. I know this because I customized many Time Lords for my action figure adventures back in the day and taking those heads off and putting new ones on was a real pain in the backside. So in order to do this fourth Doctor, they had to change the sculpt. Now, I'm really glad we've got the fourth Doctor as a Time Lord. It's a great look. It's the only time we see any Doctor dressed in full Time Lord regalia. I'm all for it. I know some people said, wouldn't it have been nice if we'd have had the buccaneer outfit that he wears for the majority of that story? Yeah, that would have been really cool. But I imagine that's just too expensive with too much tooling trying to kit bash that figure together. Makes more sense to keep the costs down and use the Time Lord look alongside the others. So let's talk about the head. Well, I think the face of it is very similar to the Terror of the Zygons fourth Doctor that came out a couple of years ago. And I remember that caused a lot of contention on the internet at the time. And I think I was quite generous in my review saying that I didn't think it looked too bad and that the paint apps maybe spoiled it a little bit because the actual sculpt, the digital sculpts that Affable Design did, which are available to look at on their Facebook page, look fantastic. You know, it looks like Tom. And I think we've run into the same problem here. The paint applications have let down what could otherwise be a really good sculpt. Now, I say this because at certain angles, you can really see the shape of Tom's face in there. I think what's happened is the paint around the eyes in particular has maybe just made him look a bit off. My seven-year-old nephew saw this figure and went, oh, look, it's Tom Baker. So he knew who it was. So I guess it does look like Tom Baker to some extent. But yeah, not the best likeness in the world. And I think it's just because of the paint. I think the eyes look slightly lopsided, particularly the eye on the right seems a bit, I don't know, droopy compared to others. Um, this one doesn't seem too bad. I've seen some pictures on the internet and yeah, he does look a bit lopsided. 
unfortunate, really, because I think without the heavy paint, this could look really good. I mean, the rest of the sculpt is fantastic. The way that they've sculpted the hair, again, popping out from under the skull cap looks amazing. And I do think that if the paint wasn't so heavy or the paint was done slightly differently, you might be able to see a better likeness of Tom. Likeness aside, the rest of the figure looks really, really great. I love the attention to detail by not giving him gloved hands. You know, they've painted them flesh color. And honestly, I'm glad that this is a variant of the fourth Doctor that's been added to the lineup. And then last but not least, we come to Cardinal Barusa. When I heard that this figure was coming out, I was really excited because I knew we got Chancellor Goth with a new head sculpt. So I thought, wow, I can't wait to see what the head sculpt for Angus Mackay looks like, the actor who plays Barusa in that story. But of course, this isn't Angus Mackay. Who the heck are you? Well? This is the Time Lord head sculpt that was used on the new series Time Lord that came out, like I said, back in 2008. And they've repainted him to make him look a bit like Angus Mackay. That, I think, is a little bit cheeky. I've got to admit, I think that is a little bit cheeky because obviously that isn't Angus Mackay. Angus Mackay has quite a distinctive face. I guess they thought they could get away with having some old bloke in a skull cap play some old bloke in a skull cap in Deadly Assassin. Unfortunately, I'm not quite so keen on that. I think really they should have just cut their losses and maybe said he's a Time Lord and just had a generic Time Lord. I mean, there's plenty of different looks of Time Lords in that story. There's loads of different robes. I can understand why they would want to do a named character, especially a big character like Barusa, because Barusa is a huge character. It is a shame that we haven't really got a likeness of the character as advertised on the box. Matthew Purchase on Twitter made a very good point that actually the Time Lord head looks very similar to another actor who played Barusa, which is John Arnott, who plays Barusa in The Invasion of Time, another fourth Doctor story. Not only does the face look slightly more like him, but the, the thing that makes it slightly more in that favour is the skull cap. The skull cap, as you can see, is quite ornate. There's all these little bobbly bits on top. Compare that to the other Time Lords in this set. Their skull caps are far more plain, and that was something that happened between stories. So honestly, you could always put this with your Invasion of Time figures and use it as a later version of Barusa, because the Time Lord robes are almost identical. I think the only things that are different are he's got a little medallion type thing that he wears. The only issue with that is that the collar is slightly different. The uh, inner bands of the collar are gold on the Invasion of Time version. So you could always get a Sharpie and paint that in if you wanted to. So if you're a bit annoyed that he doesn't actually look like the Barusa from that story, hey, you can stick him with your other figures and he looks slightly more like that version of Barusa. The cheeky head sculpt aside, the actual figure itself looks amazing. They have done a beautiful job with the robes and capturing the ornate patterns of the robes seen in the program. Again, the work on the collar is really lovely with that translucent plastic. Again, just like with the other ones, the paint only goes so far around the back, which again is a little strange. And then moving down to the rest of the robes, you can see he's got the gold patterning all across the robes. You've got the silver trim as well on the inside, that sort of glittery silver, which looks great. And a slightly different shade of burgundy underneath Again, with that like little sort of arrow motif for the waistline. He's got black gloves on and the silver communications discs on either hand so he can get in contact with the Castellan or the Chancery Guards or whomever. He looks great. It's just the head sculpt, which is a little bit of a shame. Now, there was a rumour going around that there was also going to be a president variant. This figure would be repainted. I guess the robes would have been cream and white. And honestly, I'd have been all for that because I think the older looking face looks kind of like the president from The Deadly Assassin. You know, he certainly looks more like the president than he does Barusa. But unfortunately, that isn't the case. That isn't happening. There is no chase version of this box set. What you see is what you get. So if you do want a president version, you're just going to have to buy another set and repaint Barusa. And then in terms of articulation, because it's the same figure, they all have the same articulation. Articulation at the head, which moves ever so slightly. The collars obviously hinder a lot of the movement, which is just like in the program, to be honest. And then we have articulation at the shoulders, again, hindered by the collar. Articulation at the biceps, at the elbows, at the wrists. And then also articulation at the waist and at the hips. Well, you can't bend the legs really because they're hindered by the huge skirts. 
but it's all of the articulation that you really need for a figure of this kind. So final thoughts. This was the set I was really looking forward to the most this year because I love the Deadly Assassin. I love the Time Lords and I love the look of the Time Lords. They're just so iconic. And I was really pleased that finally that we were going to get some classic ones. So I'm pleased to see them in the line. The set itself is a mixed bag. I love Chancellor Goth. He looks incredible. I mean, I cannot fault that figure at all. The head sculpt is incredible. The fourth Doctor would be really, really great, but there's something about Tom's likeness which is just throwing it off slightly. I know some people said it looked like Miriam Margulies, and maybe it does a little, but yeah, it does make him look sort of old lady-ish. There's, there's something about it. I just can't quite put my finger on it. But I mean, like I said, my nephew recognised it was Tom Baker, so you know, it, it, he's in there somewhere, clearly. And then last but not least, Barusa. He's a really annoying one because I really want to love this figure because the Everything about it is fantastic, but it's just not him. It's not his head. So, um, yeah, it's Barusa in another regeneration that we didn't see on screen. But honestly, they're really beautiful figures. And I think once you've got them in hand, you'll realize just how nice they are, particularly Barusa. I think the paint apps on him are phenomenal. I love that maroon color, especially with the collar and stuff. It just looks fantastic. So, like I said, there are some issues, but otherwise... I'm pretty happy. I'm glad we've got the Time Lords in the classic range. So let me know what you think in the comments below. And uh, if you enjoyed this review, please like and subscribe. And I'll see you all next time for another Doctor Who action figure review. Bye-bye.